Methylene diphenyl diisocyanate is shipped in a variety of packages to customers all over the world. Almost all shipments make it to their intended destination without incident, and most are transferred without spillage. But regardless of how carefully procedures are followed, emergencies do occur. If this happens, it's important that you respond in an appropriate manner. In this section, we will discuss emergency response to an MDI spill within a facility as well as disposal guidelines. The best time to think about how to respond to an emergency situation is not when the emergency is taking place. An emergency response plan must be in place before handling MDI. Be sure your emergency response plan includes information such as what you need to control a release of MDI, avoid potential cross-contamination, prevent injury to yourself and your co-workers, or damage to the environment. Periodic review of your plan helps ensure the plan remains current with legal requirements and leading practices. In addition to your facility's emergency response plan, some manufacturers may supply their own in-house emergency response telephone numbers and contacts in case of an incident involving a spill, leak, or damage. All MDI producers in the United States are registered with Chemtrek, the Chemical Transportation Emergency Center established by the American Chemistry Council. Chemtrek is staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, toll free at 1-800-424-9300 and is available to provide emergency response information to the United States, Canada and Mexico. A call to Chemtrek will provide first action advice on handling procedures for emergencies involving MDI, and operators will also make contact with the manufacturer. Chemtrek is not a governmental reporting agency. Providing accurate information to Chemtrek is imperative in order to receive correct response information. So, it's important to identify the product by its trade name. All U.S. producers of MDI have response capabilities and can provide assistance if requested. If a package arrives at your facility and is leaking, follow your company's emergency plan or call Chemtrek to communicate with the product manufacturer for assistance. In the event of an incident, allow only trained and qualified individuals into the spill area. Never approach a spill without the appropriate personal protective equipment. MDI is normally transported and unloaded at temperatures below 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Below this temperature, MDI has a low vapor pressure, which greatly reduces the potential for exposure by inhalation. In the event of a product spill, activate your emergency response plan and stop the flow of product from the source if this can be accomplished safely. Do not allow spilled MDI to flow into drains or sewers. MDI will react with water and could obstruct the flow and clog the drain. To stop the spread of the spilled material, use absorbent materials such as vermiculite, sawdust, clay earth, sweeping compound, or sand to create a barrier around the spill or the inlet to the sewer or drain. Depending on the size of the incident, spill pillows or other containment materials may be used to prevent further spreading of the product. Once the spill has been stopped, absorbed, pumped off, or removed from the receiving surface, and there is no chance of further spread of the product, decontaminate the area with an appropriate neutralizing agent. It is important to ensure all liquid has been absorbed before attempting neutralization of remaining product. Consult the product manufacturer's SDS or contact the product manufacturer for neutralizing solution recommendations. Prepare the neutralizing solution ahead of time as well as the absorbent material and have them readily available if an emergency arises. Apply the neutralizing solution over the entire spill area. A common ratio for thorough decontamination is 10 parts of neutralizing solution to one part spilled material. Once the neutralizing solution has been applied, cover the area with the additional absorbent material. 
spread the absorbent material around to aid in contact between the surface and the neutralizing solution. Then shovel all of the absorbent material into an appropriate waste container. Apply neutralizing solution again to help ensure adequate decontamination. Place the lid loosely on the container and move it to a well-ventilated area in case further reaction occurs. Do not tighten the lid because dangerous pressures may result from the neutralization process. Carbon dioxide gas is generated through the neutralization process, so frequent monitoring of the container can reduce potential risks. The lid is not secured until the reaction is complete. Properly dispose of all contaminated protective equipment. Any waste material that has been generated during spill cleanup must be disposed of in accordance with applicable regulations. Depending upon the circumstances and the amount of the spillage, local agencies may have to be notified. Of course, your company's own hazardous materials team or outside contractor are resources to help determine this. Containers used for waste disposal must be labeled in accordance with applicable waste regulations such as those promulgated by the US DOT and EPA. Contact your supplier for additional information. After the product has fully reacted and prior to disposal, tighten the lid on the drum securely. Always check with regulatory authorities for proper disposal guidelines. In this section, we have discussed practices for emergency response to an MDI spill, as well as disposal guidelines. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader or contact the product manufacturer. For more information on the topics covered in this section, read sources including the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry. Guidelines for Management and Disposal of Hazardous Wastes from Polyurethane Processing.